Dramatic sampling shows asteroid Bennu is nothing like scientists expect it. In fact, during the dramatic sampling, the surface of the object was soft and flowed like a fluid. Holy macaroni. This is not what we were taught. But in fact, NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission unleashed an unexpected explosion when it touched down on the asteroid. And this is asteroid Benno, and it did the touchdown in October of 2020. It was to collect a precious sample to carry home to Earth, and that sample is headed back. But it won't reach us until October, September of 2023. Now, mission scientists have described the dramatic sample retrieval recently, which led to surprising discoveries about the asteroid's nature. And this has been released in two new studies. And the results aren't just intriguing. The researchers say that the findings might have implications for a possible future deflection mission should the 1,640 feet wide Bennu, which is 500 meters wide, one of the riskiest known Earth asteroids ever threaten to impact the planet. Now, and I quote, we expected the surface to be pretty rigid kind of like if you touch down on a gravel pile. A little bit of dust flying away and a few particles jumping up, Dante Loretta said, a planetary scientist at the University of Arizona and principal investigator of the OSIRIS-REx mission. He went on to say that, but as we were bringing back the images after the event, we were stunned. We saw a giant wall of debris flying away from the sample side. For spacecraft operators, it was really frightening. The impact aftermath was so unexpected that Loretta, lead author of one of the two studies, campaigned for the spacecraft to revisit the area to understand what happened. And six months after sample collection on April 21st, of 2021, the researchers got another glimpse of the OSIRIS-REx touchdown site. And when the spacecraft first arrived at Bennu, that site, called Nightingale, sat within a 65-foot-wide impact crater. After touchdown, the mission scientists found a brand new 26-foot-wide, 8-meter gaping hole in the surface of the asteroid with displaced rubble and boulders scattered around the site. Absolutely mind-blowing. That's a surprisingly large scar. Scientists had expected to scoop out a bit about as wide as the sample collector itself, about 12 inches or just 30 centimeters. But in fact, the craft sunk in, according to the lead author. There clearly was no resistance whatsoever on the surface of this asteroid. The surface was soft and flowed away like a fluid. This is the touchdown right before the foot penetrated, well, over 12 inches into the surface. That's a surprising scar. The probe sank as deep as 30 inches, which is 70 centimeters, almost a meter, revealing pristine material that, unlike the asteroid surface, was unaltered by the steady battering of cosmic rays and the solar wind, the streams of high-energy particles that are coming from the sun. Now, from the measurements acquired during this repeat visit, which is absolutely mind-boggling that they did a, a loop-de-loop. -loop. Now, fantastically, from the measurements acquired during this repeat visit, Loretta's team calculated that the density of the surface material was only about 31 to 44 pounds per cubic foot. That's 500 to 700 kilograms per cubic meter. For comparison... 
a typical earth rock has a density about six times higher, more like 190 pounds per cubic foot. Now, a second study based on measurements of forces exerted on the probe during the impact, which you're looking at here. The circle is the landing site, and the impact crater is the entire ring, which is visible. Now, notice it didn't move the big boulder, but it did move a lot of debris. Now, the second study based on measurements of forces exerted on the probe during the impact confirmed the numbers. The surface boulders are very porous, and there's a lot of void space between them, according to Kevin Walsh, a geologist at the Southwest Research Institute in Colorado and lead author of the second study. And we're going to link both studies below this video, so don't fret. And according to Kevin, he expected that small fine grains and dust would stick to the large boulders and fill the void space and act as a glue to provide some type of strength, which would allow the surface to push back against the spacecraft. But that's not there. Bennu's soft, fluffy nature may complicate a possible future deflection attempt should astronomers determine that a rock threatens to hit Earth. Now, Bennu, at 1,640 feet wide, well, would cause continent-wide disruption on our planet. And even though NASA estimates the chance of a collision at 1 in 2700 between the years 2175 and 2199, Bennu is still one of the most dangerous asteroids currently known, period. But that doesn't mean anything because each and every day we discover new objects about to impact. So, there is that. Now, scientists assume that many asteroids sport a similar rubble pile softness or structure. Essentially, conglomerations of rock, gravel, and dirt held together by very weak gravitational forces. But we don't agree with them. We think it's all electric, and these are electric double layers that are just like magnets holding these particles together in space with very weak magnetic fields. And the sampling experiment at Bennu shows that it's almost impossible to predict how such a rubble pile might respond to an impact or even a sampling or a landing. Now, the touchdown did provide the first experience of really pressing something into the surface, Walsh said. And if we ever go and actually try to deflect something like this, we would need to know that the surface is like that so that it doesn't just absorb the impact or maybe break apart into millions of pieces, which will all hit or hopefully burn up. Now, the... Research is fantastic, and they even have a shot here of debris being ejected because the lander is now on the object, but the main mission is away, taking a picture of debris being ejected into space. That's how weak these magnetic forces are on the surface of this dust pile. Now, the OSIRIS-REx mission was recently extended, and after the spacecraft drops off its cargo at Earth next year, it will head to another asteroid, Apophis, another high-risk asteroid which will visit in 2029. Absolutely fascinating. So as NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft will visit asteroid Apophis, it will also get a new name. And we will link you with the papers provided for this podcast, including the July 7th, 2022 release of Spacecraft Sample Collection and Subsurface Excavation of Asteroid Bennu, and Near Zero Cohesion and Loose Packing of Bennu's Near Surface Revealed by Spacecraft Contact, released on the same date. July 7th. 
This mission was fantastic. And it provided more evidence that the people running the show, the scientists, the space scientists, NASA, and the rest of the astrophysicists and astronomers have no idea what they're talking about, period. Science is not settled. In fact, science is so new in outer space and other realms that we haven't really explored that many people think that it is settled. The rotation of the planets are known. We are in a Copernican heliocentric system. These are all assumptions. And the data coming out is showing that our assumptions are wrong. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when all the assumptions in science have been pretty much wrong. Stick with the winners. We're making progress. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And be safe. We love you. And that's a boom. Ding.